Imagine you're hiking through the mountains in the dead of winter and get lost. You're shivering from head to toe and your body starts getting numb. You certainly need to know how to act in these situations. And we, therefore, advise you to keep watching The Way to Survive Hypothermia. If you don't want to get stuck in extreme conditions like these, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with all our videos. The impact of cold temperatures on human health is significant. Cold-related mortality, according to a University of California, Berkeley economist, shortens Americans' average life expectancy by a decade, if not more. Accidents caused by snow and ice, carbon monoxide poisoning, and house fires are indirectly caused by cold weather. The elderly and infirm are the most vulnerable to the cold weather illness and injury. Even though women account for two-thirds of mortality during a cold period, according to the same UC Berkeley study, frostbite and hypothermia are the two most common cold weather ailments. Frostbite occurs when your skin temperature drops below freezing, causing ice crystals to develop within your skin cells, killing them. When your body loses more heat than it produces, hypothermia occurs, and your core body temperature decreases. When you get wet and cold, you're more likely to get hypothermia, which can lead to coma or death. Get yourself into a warmer area as quickly as possible to avoid hypothermia. Cover with whatever you have on hand, such as blankets, a sleeping bag, pillows, or even newspaper, because your head loses the most heat. If it isn't already covered, do so right away. If you're wearing damp clothes, remove them and replace them with some dry ones. If you don't have any dry clothing, it's preferable to go naked than wear wet clothing. Hypothermia victims should always be handled with caution, as they are susceptible to cardiac arrest. Reassure them that they'll be alright by keeping them horizontal and quiet. If you're with someone, snuggle up in a sleeping bag or hug each other tightly to stay warm. If you're not in the middle of nowhere, get competent medical help as quickly as possible. The first thing you'll need to survive the bitter cold is a good shelter. It's critical to pick up a good site for your shelter. Clearings in the mountains should not be pursued because they can be avalanche hotspots. At the bottom of the clearing, look for piled trash and broken tree stumps. You're probably in an avalanche chute if you locate both. The clearing site is as much better spot for refuge. You should also stay away from regions near cliffs and overlooks. If the night is approaching quickly, you must construct an emergency shelter as feasible. Don't get too carried away. Your only purpose is to survive the night. Dig a deep enough snow trench to offer a wind buffer. For further protection, pile and pack more snow on the windy side. To insulate the bottom, gather as much soft stuff as possible. Pine boughs are plentiful in most wooded locations. Once inside, cover yourself with as much pine or other leaves as you can, because snow is a greater insulator than a tent. Your emergency shelter should keep you warm all night. Build a more sophisticated snow cave if you have the time. It will not only provide better protection from the elements, but it will also get your heart rate up and warm you up as you create it. Just make sure you don't sweat because moisture is your worst enemy in frigid temperatures. Low-lying locations are cooler and moister than hillsides, which gives considerable wind shelter. To assist, keep heat, make your shelter as tiny as possible. This is especially true for the entrance, which should be blocked with a bag or tree branches heap high. It's also crucial to keep your shelter well ventilated. Make small air holes in the ceiling with tree branches and double check that your block entry permits enough airflow. If you have a cooking stove or light, keep it out of the shelter unless it is exceedingly well ventilated. It's advised not to take any chances because carbon monoxide poisoning is a killer in the woods and can kill you quickly. Avoid utilizing metal for your shelters, such as a plain wing or fountain roofing, as it will absorb your required heat. Build a debris lodge when you're stuck in the cold and there's no snow. Place one end of the ridge pole which spans the length of the shelter on the ground and the other on top of a substantial base, such as a tree stump or boulder. It can also be nailed to a tree. Place two extra heavy branches at the top of the ridge pole diagonally and leash them together with vinyl rope. To make the rib frame, line the length of the ridge pole with thick branches. Make sure it's big enough to fit you in. To create a lattice look, place smaller sticks crosswise. Lighter soft debris such as pine needles and leaves should be added until it reaches a thickness of at least two feet. The thicker the debris, the more protection it provides. Block the entrance of a rock or extra debris and cover the interior floor with pines and leaves. 
After you've constructed your shelter, concentrate on water and warmth. Depending on the circumstances, the human body may survive for roughly a week or less without water. Within a few hours, dehydration can develop in. It's crucial to remember that water is equally as necessary in cold weather as it is in hot heat for survival. For survival, you need at least two quarts of water. And in cold weathers, you'll need considerably more. It may seem like a good idea to eat snow, but it can drop your core temperature and cause dehydration. If you have one, melt your ice and snow in it. If not, wrap it in a handkerchief and squeeze out the water as it melts. When feasible, cleanse the water by boiling it for 10 minutes. In distant regions, snow and ice may be safe to eat, but there is always a risk. If you have coffee or alcohol on hand, don't drink it. It may provide a short-term warm-up, but it will quickly dehydrate you. Look for open water sources such as rivers, streams, lakes, and springs. If you don't have access to a purification system, acquire your water from a fast-moving body and strain it through a cloth to remove large chunks of sediment. Warmth is the next step in your battle against the bitter cold. Keep your layers neat. Dirt and sweat can clog air gaps, diminishing the warmth of your clothing. Sweating dampens your skin and clothes, making you feel colder. By altering your layers, you can avoid overheating. Staying warm necessitates the flow of blood. Tight garments can suffocate your circulation. In the cold, wet clothes is your worst enemy. Keep your neck area flexible to allow moisture to escape and avoid absorbing cotton garments. Layering your footwear is just as important as layering your apparel. Start with a thin pair of nylon, silk, or woolen socks, then layer with more wool socks. Keep your feet dry, even if it means temporarily removing your socks, because your fingers are in direct contact with each other. Mittens are warmer than gloves. While it's a fallacy that most of your body heat escapes through your head, you should keep your head covered for weather protection. Get a your covering stocking cap and don't take it off unless you start to sweat. Even a baseball cap can aid in heat retention. Your parka should be waterproof and lined with goose down or another fiber filling if possible. Make sure it's big enough to cover your layers comfortably and sufficiently ventilated. It's never a good idea to sleep in the same clothing you wore the day because they're probably damp. Thermal underwear or sweatpants are the most acceptable options for sleeping in. To guarantee, you have something warm and dry to sleep in. Don't wear these items during the day. Keep your hat on and wear the dirtiest socks you have. Sleeping with your head and face inside your sleeping bag, even though it seems warmer, is not recommended. Your moistened breath adds wetness to the situation. If you're going in the winter, prepare ahead of time by packing blankets or a sleeping bag in your trunk. Always have some waterproof matches or a lighter in your glove box. And don't forget to take them with you if you get stuck or need assistance. You should also have a map of the place you're visiting, even if you're familiar with it. Blizzards can cause you to lose your bearings, and having a decent map can mean the difference between life and death. You should also notify someone of your plans and bring an emergency kit with you on the trip. A first aid kit, a gallon bottle of water, and some energy bars or chocolate can be helpful in addition to blankets and matches. Get a fire going once you've secured your shelter and water. A fire can be used to melt snow for water, cook food, drying clothes, and making smoke for rescue in addition to keeping you warm. Make a fire pit near the entrance of your shelter, with a decent windbreak heap around it. The fire should be in the center of the room, with plenty of room for your wood and a seat. And so with that, we have come to the end. We hope you found this video interesting. Let us know your thoughts and views in the comment section below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Until next time.